pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. You may be seated. The uh, first thing we have on our agenda is always one of the most special things that I think we get to do as a board, and that is recognition of students who are uh, have done amazing things. And uh, first of all, we have Enrique Navarro as our bowling state champion. Where is Enrique? Come on up. Right up from here is fine. Well, congratulations from all of us. Um, I got a triple once, a turkey they call it, but that was as good as I ever got. <laughs> so, how, what, was your, what was your score at the end of that, or the um, winning score? My winning score was a 199. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Very impressive. Did you get some hardware or anything with that? Um, I got a large plaque for the state champion, and I got a medal. Very good. And you got them hung somewhere appropriate? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> we had a copy, one, copy made for the bowling alley, so they ended up there. Well, that's great. Cool. That's great. Well, I mean, even if right now it's a club sport. Is that correct? And, you know, who knows where it will end up. But, um, Nonetheless, really proud of you, and I hope it was an exciting, fun day for you, too. It was so at work, parents, and back up all there. Yeah, my mom, my mom was crying. <laughs> you had an entourage there to support you? That's even better. That, that just makes it even more fun for all of you. So uh, on behalf of the school board, uh, we just all want to just congratulate you and thank you for all your efforts and for making Rochester look good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't want to share anything else? <laughs> okay, well, just thank you so much, and way to go. Thanks. Can I say something? Sure. You asked what his winning score was, so he's telling you the, the score of the last game. That was his worst game of all day. <laughs> we almost lost it there in the end. His average for that whole day, he was just somebody I don't know. It was a two, like a 222 all day long. It's like no matter what he threw, it, it knocked everything down. Everybody, I, I was impressed, and I, you know, I watch them bowl all the time. So. Oh, wow. Well, that, that's, he did that had to be super fun for all of us. Oh, it was, it was. Um, the next, uh, Mr. Lava. Yep. Oh, no, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> we also are uh, going to uh, recognize, are you leaving? What are you doing? No, I'm leaving. Oh, okay. The uh, <clears throat> high school en engineering class, robotics, Oh, you're going to give us a demonstration? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so I'll just go real quick. Uh, I guess real quick information about the first robotics so you kind of have an idea what we're even talking about. Um, so like in 1997, there's a, uh, Dean came in who invented like the Segway. Okay, came up with a program for high school kids to create robots and a competition. Um, so it broke, it's been broke down into three sections. Uh, kind of as you go through, there's what we call Lego League, which is like your elementaries. Uh, we call First Tech, which is like your middle school. And then what we compete is what we call FRC, which is first revised competition. Um, so kind of put it in perspective, like uh, casting competes in like, kind of like the first tech challenge actually competing with something called Vex Robotics, which is the same size robot, if you will. Um, and what we obviously compete in is something called FRC, which is obviously a bigger robot. So kind of give you an idea um, of, of the build, build I guess, requirements. So we have six weeks, which is not very long, to build a robot from scratch, uh, program a robot to compete in a game, wherever the game is for that year. Uh, game changes every year, so it's not like we can get perfect at it. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea. Robots are 120 inches perimeter, so in other words, it can't be out 120 inches. It can't weigh more than 125 pounds. 
Um, so those are kind of some, um, just some ideas and stuff that um, happens through FRC. Um, this year we were very, very successful. This is something I don't do every year, um, just for the fact that you gotta have kids. Um, this year we had kids. Um, I have 15 very talented kids that put a lot of work and effort into it. Um, as you can see, these are not, this is not like I go to Walmart and buy parts. Everything on this thing is <laughs> custom built. Um, you know, we're talking CNC machining and, and um, you know, their stuff you buy that, what we call Andy Marks out of Kokomo. Um, you know, you buy some electronic stuff, but you still got to put all that together. So it's kind of a, it's a, it's a big, very overwhelming thing. A um, little bit about the competitions. So we competed in two district competitions, which allowed us to qualify for the Worlds. Um, so kind of from the perspective, I can't remember how many was there the first one, 38, 38, 44 teams. It was 38. 38, I think. So 38 teams um, competed in a district. Um, for, to kind of put it in perspective, we are by far the smallest school. Um, like I told you, I have 15 talented kids. Um, the school corporations that we are that we align with or, or in um, have 15 kids in the pit, and they have another 70 kids in the bleachers, and then they have another 400 parents in the bleachers. Um, so. I know that I had some parents go, and I and I told, warned my parents before I go. It's the most overwhelming thing you'll ever see in your entire life. It's very hard to describe. And you know, when you have a parent walk in and the bleachers are packed from side to side with all these people just screaming for robotics stuff, it's it's pretty it's pretty wild. Um, so it's pretty overwhelming. Um, the kids had no idea what they were getting into um, until it was too late. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I I joke, but. You know, I, in my first email, I warned the parents, I said, listen, it's going to be stressful, it's going to be high energy. When your kids come home on Sunday afternoon, they're going to crash and they're going to not want to talk to you for, for till Monday. And I, I, I asked my parents, I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty accurate. Um, <laughs> you know, just a tech inspection, just for example, tech inspection with the first day, what did it take us? Four hours? Yeah. Just to get through tech inspection. I mean, we're, just to be able to play the game, it cost, took us four hours. Uh, just to even able to go through all that tech inspection stuff, but we rebuilt these set of bumpers there. I mean, we, we thought we were rolling. We thought we were in great shape. We walked out of this, you know, on, on Saturday morning, like, hey, we're, we're good. <laughs> we got there, we were not good. Um, they had three or four kids go to their shop and, and build brand new bumpers there, uh, just so we can even compete. So that kind of puts it in a little bit of perspective. Um, so as the competition goes on, it's two days competition. And then you have a day or a half a day of, of the round robin kind of a, it's a schoolyard pick. Um, we were very lucky um, in the first we school we we did well enough. We did we were in the top ten or top fifteen most of the competition. Um, so you can kind of see what this is how what most schools corporations. So this is ten twenty four. They are our alliance partners. They gave it this trophy to uh, just to say hey thanks for being our partner. So that was really cool for them. Um, of course, we've never been that far, so we didn't know idea that's what kind of what happened. So it kind of gives you an idea. Um, then you get, when you win, or you get into the final round, which is what we did, um, we got our nice trophy we had to add, and then our plaque, um, basically. And it's, you know, it's, I know you don't understand, but this is a very big honor because not everybody gets one of these. Um, and then to top it all off, they give these kids these medals they all get to take home, and, and it's, you know, talks about when it was made, you know, when you've done it or whatever. Um, so that's, it, it's definitely an honor. It's definitely something um, I hope these kids never forget. Uh, and I hope that they, they learn something from it. Like I said, there's so much, so much you could take out of the classroom. And when you put this and put them into a very high stress, high energy environment, your, you know, your, your true kids, your kids that excel really set forward. And, and that's kind of what happened with this. Um, so we were very blessed. Like I said, we did really well the first one. The second one, we were in the top 10 most of the day. And then the, that third day, we got in there and we kind of, what happened? I think we laid, we had a problem. Something happened with communications, or I don't remember, you guys were driving. Yeah, well, something didn't work. And, you know, we felt it was just like, it was fast. You know, and you only get so many chances at this. So, um, so you got to give the kids a lot of credit. I mean, this is, like I said, this is not something you just, uh, show up and do. Um, this is something that takes a lot of work and time, a lot of energy for it. So I'm going to show you to let the kids kind of demonstrate 
Uh, and I just lived my last two while I'm on my soapbox. I want to make sure you understand how this works. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. Pro do this. You can a like a, like some of the adults and some of the parents went. Some of the adults really step in and really do a lot of work on the robot there, and more kids are more like tightening bolts and turning wrenches. I, if you guys know anything about me, that's not how I teach this. Um, these kids do everything, and, and I'll give them some guidance, but I'm telling you, 99% of the time, except some, guy, some dummy that cut a tire with a sawzall, which was me. Um, <laughs> anyway, long story short, I mean, the kids do it all, and if you walk around some of these pits and stuff, when there's you know, 40, 40 teens, you'll see some adults take over and, and do that. That's never the case in my pit. My kids take over, they do it all. When they come back, they are fixing it, they are doing it all. So they have, I, I am under his guidance. If they something really stressful we need to solve, I'll step in, but 99% of the time it is all the kids. So I'll make sure you understand that when the kids built this, the kids built this from the scratch up. I, I didn't have hardly anything to do it. I just kind of guided them around. So um, I'll show you a quick demonstration. We'll drive it real quick. Um, if that's okay. I need a couple of you guys to come up here real quick to set it off with me. Uh, the game this year, they have these <coughs> cones, and then we have, I don't know, they're like these blue blob things they are supposed to pick up. You have to set it off. Yeah. Introduce yourself, students. Huh? I want the kids to introduce themselves. Oh, you. yeah. <laughs> And like we said, I mean, they take a beating. I mean, all these, car, all these machines, you know, you, you laugh. Some people say, why don't you use the same parts next year? Well, it's kind of like driving a car that has 300,000 miles on it. You know, it's been beat to death. Do you really want to put a brand new starter in it? And, you know, that's kind of how you got to kind of attack it. Um, so everything is done wirelessly, which is pretty wild. Um, so what you're hearing is the air compressor firing up. We have pneumatics on it. Um, Pneumatics, electronics, um, I don't know, electronics, all different kinds of things. So, um, yeah, so you can kind of see, so the, what they're trying to raise right now, I want you to flip that over. All the way? Yeah, all the way. So this is kind of how we played the game. So we kind of drove around and picked up these cones. And you got to remember, these fields are huge. Just kind of think of a basketball, uh, a basketball gym, length. So you'll pick them up and then you have to put them on these posts. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so our drive system is what we call neck system. So you can kind of see if you're close enough. They have wheels inside of wheels, so they turn a lot faster. I, I don't know, Kyle, what does this thing run? Probably 15 or 20, 25 mile an hour across the field. So it's not like it's, it, it's, we geared it. We learned from the very first one, we had it geared really like low because we have to kind of go up on this ramp. And so the second one, we made this baby fast. So that's what we did. Um, so it's pretty fast, um, you know, and we have lots of cuts and scrapes and stuff, but you kind of get the idea. Um, we have a couple other little things on it. You want to whip it around. Um, there's some green wheels in front of it. You can kind of see them. This is kind of how we started the game. Uh, they had a green or purple ball inside of it they picked up and played. So the last part I'm going to say, and then I'll let the kids kind of go through it. Um, one thing I've got to tell you kind of about the game is there's something called autonomous. And we, you know, this big world, we all watch the 60 Minutes thing about AI. This is where we're headed. I mean, these kids developed this machine. I, I could kick it on, I'm not going to because we're not big enough, but this machine will run by itself. I mean, it, it's honestly, the kids will program it, duck, or, you know, he programmed the whole thing to, to do this all by itself. Mm -hmm. So without anybody controlling it. Scary world. I mean, we're talking, <laughs> you know what I mean? 15, 18 year old kids doing that. So kind of gets you an idea where we're going. So that's, that's pretty cool for that aspect of it. So um, I'll let the kids kind of go through and introduce them to that. Oh yeah, I guess we're good. So you guys want to kind of, you guys want to go up here and kind of introduce yourself real quick. I'll start. I'm Kyler Lau. Um, I was the driver for it this year um, with the frame and everything. Um, Eli Swingo. I also helped with the chassis and I was, I operated everything but the wheels, I guess. Uh, I'm Cannon Towel. I've worked on the chassis as well and I've programmed the autonomous and then I was the coach of 
Tyler and Eli? Uh, I'm Braden Zink. I was the uh, technician, so uh, if you know things broke, I'd be the one to go up there and you know assess what broke, then kind of fix it, lead everybody else. I uh, helped design this claw here, and I also helped design this sliding mechanism that moves back and forth here. So, well, I'm RJ Karenko. I also help with the claw. And I also, I didn't want to be, but I was put on bumper duty as well. <laughs> <laughs> Those bumpers, they were so annoying, but they worked in the end. Uh, I'm Peyton Miller, and I designed most of the arm up there as far as the connection of everything. Um, I'm Marisol Ochoa, and I made the bumpers the first time, and then we had to re <laughs> redo them again. <laughs> Um, I'm Elizabeth Weaver. I helped a little bit with the bumpers, but I did a lot of the behind-the-scenes work. Like, I made the shirts, I booked all the hotels and stuff, so yeah. I'm Macy Nelson, and I helped uh, with the design of the claw and remaking the bumpers. <laughs> and obviously we have some kids that aren't here, um, but yeah, they joke about the bumpers, but I'm telling you the bumpers are stressful. <laughs> I and I, like I said, and Sully didn't run. We read the rules, and I, I agree with myself. We, uh, we walked out, we thought we were good. You know, three pages of rules. Yeah. yeah. I'm just bumpers. Yeah. Three pages, and we thought we were good. Oh we walked out, like, oh, three we got pages, this. like, ah. tiny print, yeah. too. Just it's the not, it's not just three pages or something. Yeah. yeah. The rule book is 78 pages long. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of things. So, how many of you are seniors? Oh, oh, so so how many nice. of you are going into some form of engineering after you leave high school? That's outstanding, outstanding. No. Anything else you want to demo for us before you, we cut you loose? Uh, I can't do something. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you been doing this, Joel, with the robotics? So, we haven't been continuous with some COVID problems where we started in 2009. So, but this is by far the best thing we've well, I've had some really good, just, you got to understand, I've had some really smart, really great kids that we <laughs> this year we, we, we made things happen. When I was just casted, we, we were given a free kit. Yeah. A free kit. Yeah, you don't want to know what uh, yeah. you, you brought back to you, the, you know what I have. The cost of those free kits when you get down the road is yeah. As it was it was pretty exciting to see third and fourth graders doing that as well little kids. But this is this is incredible. Yeah, it, it really is. It, it, it's uh it's like I said, it's you can't recreate something like the classroom. It's just it's, it's just really Now when you went to Worlds We didn't go, we okay. chose not to go this week. Oh okay. We did. We, 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 we're going 15 years. We're going 15 years. We're going 15 years. The amount of people that are graduating from Rochester that go on to engineering, the percentage wise, has got to be quite impressive, and especially in this class. That is excellent. Well, Kudos it's really the kids are really not a lot of me. <laughs> I'm not really that smart. Well, I, I, All right. Good. You've got a. You've started something that's yep. going to just continue to grow. Yep. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Thank everyone. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, students, as much as I know you'd like to stay for the rest of the board meeting, you are uh, you are welcome to uh, leave. <laughs> Uh, board meeting, whoops, wrong date, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
approval of the minutes from the March 20th regular board meeting and uh, approval of the minutes from the March 20th regular board meeting and approval of the minutes from the April 4th study session at the high school. Did you all have a chance to look through those? Jenny's got an eagle eye for this stuff. She all, she picks up things that I don't understand. Hmm? I read, they look good to me. Yeah, okay, good, that's good to know, okay. Any questions from anybody on the board? Any questions from the community? <coughs> okay, if not, I will uh, entertain a motion that we approve these as presented. So moved. <coughs> <laughs> okay, Jenny and uh, All right, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Next is the approval of the funds report as presented. And I have those. Um, in the uh, did you all get a chance to look at the funds report? Okay, we have a, an ending balance of, for the, um, gosh, I wore the wrong glasses tonight, sorry. Education fund, $1,382,497.67. So, um, can we approve those all at once? All three funds? Okay, okay. good. Yeah. All right, moving on to uh, approval of claims in the amount of one million seventy eight dollars and ninety eight cents. Katie, did you want to do operations? Operations. Oh, I have to do operations too. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not done. Legally you don't have to read any of them. Well that's good to know. So. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Where am I? Oh yeah, I gotta go to the rest of that page. I apologize. Okay, we're gonna approve the funds reports as read. We got that part. Moving on. Approval <laughs> of claims totally one million dollars, one million seventy eight dollars and ninety eight cents, and approval of the payroll for March twenty fourth, twenty twenty three, and April seventh, twenty twenty three, totaling eight hundred eighty thousand dollars, six hundred thirteen dollars <laughs> and ninety six cents. Questions or comments? You look at me like I'm from outer space. I had a rough day, don't you? <laughs> I think it's a fabulous new way of doing it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, any questions from the community? All right, it, I would entertain a motion that we approve the uh, financial reports as read. So moved. Thank you, Mark. Second. And Casey. All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. And make sure I'm not on the page. That's what I meant to say for this. Okay, that's that's where I thought we were. Thank you. Just want to make sure. Next, um, we have a guest here, uh, Mr. Brian Fitzwater. Mr. Fitzwater, if you'd like to stand, he has a presentation uh, for us regarding the golf, uh, regards to the golf court ordinance led by the Rochester City Council. Okay. Anywhere in particular? Or, you know? As long as we can see. Okay. Uh, I'm on the, the City Council, as many of you know, and uh, an issue has come up before the City Council as to whether we should uh, allow golf carts in the city. And there's a, one committee that looked at everything and then some more of the City Council members are looking at it. Uh, question I had at our meeting was, has anybody talked to schools about it? The answer was no. So I know Brian Goodman has reached out to, uh, well, he, he said he did, and you were gone, he was gone. Prior to our last meeting, there wasn't anything back from you. So during our meeting, I sent a message to Stephen, and I said, hey, at least bring it to your attention. My concern is, you know, other than having them on the roads, but 16, 17, 18 year old, driving in and out of schools, but also parents or grandparents dropping the kids off at the other schools. And so at least bring it to your attention. If you have any issues or complaints or concerns, talk amongst yourselves. And then uh, uh, we'll probably bring it up at our next meeting, which is uh, next week. Are you sure? Not a whole lot of time, but any of you or all of you are certainly welcome to attend the meeting and you know, concerns, questions, anything else. 
or representative or what you like to do, if anything. I mean, at least you should know about it and say, well, that's a concern or it's not a concern. Right, right now, I have no idea how you know, what the vote might be, whether you proceed or not. But is it, if there are going to be golf courts, golf carts, we're looking at making sure there are uh, uh, safety issues out of uh, lights, blinkers, rear view mirrors, a big flag on top, like, it's, like some of the bicycles have. Uh, they talked about having a strobe light on them to make sure like some of the uh, Amish vehicles have. So, so there's for safety for those people, but also everyone else is driving around. But again, my concern was the schools, so I don't know. What all does the ordinance entail? Like, Sorry? What all does the <laughs> ordinance entail? Are you guys talking about licensing them or they would have any licenses? If, if they were, if we do approve it, they would need to be uh, inspected by the city police and meet what are the basic requirements. Uh, you must have a licensed driver and must be insured. So if you owned one, you couldn't have a 14-year-old child, grandchild operating on the city streets. Uh, they would not be allowed to drive essentially on 25 and 14 uh, with traffic, in cross traffic perpendicular, but they cannot operate on state highways at all. So it's essentially, for the most part, you're looking at the on the, the west side of the lake, there's no way to get from the west side of the lake to town other than going through um, the long way around the, the south side of the lake. So that's what the color, if they follow the rules, and they're not supposed to be on the bike path either. So that way, if you're looking to try and walk, if I can get from the west side, you cross here down the bike path, I mean, they're not supposed to. Yes, sir. I just wonder, was there a consideration made regarding uh, whether or not the buses stop arms cameras would uh, be effective, and if so, how would they? And not, as far as I know, they identify the carts or whatever. As far as I know, the committee didn't address buses or anything else. I was not. I was not on the committee. I'm not passing the buck. I just don't know. And that, that's part of the reason why I'm here is to make sure that concerns like that could be brought to the attention of the city council. Is that something that had been like a popular, like do we have numbers on there's going to be like 50 people that want to do it around no, right. right. Some people already have them. The state laws that you cannot operate them on the streets if people are doing it. But there's a state law against drinking and driving and people do that. So <laughs> speeding as well. So you don't have a draft ordinance right now. You guys are just There's a proposal. That's what it's going on is a, a working rough draft. We've nothing, there's been no votes, there's not been a first reading or anything. But I would imagine that in our next meeting, that could be the first reading. So the idea for the carts, would that be something that might be visible or for one of our cameras on the stop arm to catch? I have no idea. Okay. And I don't know. There's something to think about. Absolutely. I know a lot of the ordinances that I've seen, and even the four-wheelers were the same way. They have to, if it's a licensed driver that has to drive it, they have to adhere to all laws, you know, oh, sure. to, as if they were driving a vehicle. I understand, which, but they're still. But they're non identifiable. Like you said, if they don't have a number, their you know, license or something. Down, yeah. If they, if they, <clears throat> whatever the camera you're talking about, what do they need to see to identify that vehicle? A license plates? Or a license plates? I, I'm not exactly sure. Will get will I can drivers share. as well, Jim? I'm sorry. Do the, do the cameras catch the face of the drivers of vehicles or just the license? Plate? Sometimes they're able to catch the drivers. Skeeter can answer better. They're oftentimes very blurry, but what we're really looking for is the license plate as well as the color, make and model of the vehicle. It's very difficult to pick up the actual face within the vehicle. Okay. My thought is if there's no license plate, then. Well, there, there's, well, there's, there's talking all. about having a, a, a sticker Whatever the annual registration sticker uh, per, uh, prominently displayed on the vehicle. Uh, Chief of Police jokes, yeah, it needs to be 12 by 12. It won't be that, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's that big, but it might just be. I, I don't a, know. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's already a, a, some kind of a law to register a golf cart if you're going to drive it around because I, I have one. I, because I, I go in every spring and, and get a, a pay 40 bucks for a little license for yeah. my golf cart. UTA. Yeah. yeah. Through the state. Yeah. 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 Just for well, recreation. Here in the county. I mean, I get the county. Bolton, it's a Fulton County in the number. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. The county is different than the city. Mm -hmm. 
So they, I believe the county already has an ordinance. Yeah. Okay. The county passed one, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, but it included the four wheelers, the ATVs, the golf carts, you know, all of that kind of thing. Yeah. And the only thing that's in front of the city right now is golf carts, not four wheelers or ATVs. That's good. Tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> Do you know how the county address needing to identify Is it just the registration sticker in the county? So you pay your stick? 40 bucks and they give you a sticker. I believe so, yeah. You just have to permanently yeah. display I mean, it. And, and I mean, there the are, right. I think, there, yeah, there are um, requirements as far as safety features. Mm -hmm. Also, turn signals, brake lights. I mean, right. you have to have everything. So, roughly the lights. same thing that's being discussed. Anything else? No. You think we need to know? No, I said I just want to present it and bring it to your attention that it's, it's out there and it could affect the school at some point. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Brian, for bringing that to our attention. Sure. Any other questions for Mr. Fitzwater? <coughs> Moving on, action item. Approval to sell scrap lockers from the natatorium at RMS. So as we've gone through uh, the construction process at the middle school in regards to our swimming uh, locker rooms, we have um, some lockers that I think would have value in regards to trying to sell them on the auction site as we have done before with various uh, um, material and equipment that has come from the school. I think that some people use those uh, for decorative purposes, others in their garage, storage areas, those types of things. So would like uh, permission to scrap those that are too rusty to sell and those that we believe have some value in selling, trying to auction those off so that the community and public have an opportunity to, to uh, purchase those, whether it's um, for personal, um, mementos or for use within their homes. Any questions from the board? Any questions from anyone else? I'll accept a motion that um, we approve uh, We approve that um, selling of the lockers. So Thank you, Stephen. Second. And Casey. All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. <coughs> Approval of corporation handbook for classified staff. And was, this was presented at our a study so, session, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. It was presented at the last study session. If you'd like for me to go through changes quickly, I can. Um, it's online and this was discussed at the. Did you guys have any other changes besides what was in here? No, we have not made any changes to the classified. I respectfully ask that from the study session to uh, this evening that we hold off on the student handbooks uh, with things that are going on uh, down at this day, but this wouldn't change based on things that are going on there. Okay. Any questions? Anyone else? Concerns? And I'll accept a motion at this time. So moved. Casey? Second. Thank you, Ethan. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you, Stephen, for coming up there eventually. <laughs> He's reading. He's reading. I can tell. It's okay. Uh, motion carries seven to zero. Uh, next item is approval of the MacBook sales plan. This was also discussed at the study session and uh, was in the minutes, I'm sure, um, for those who weren't able to be here. So. Uh, any questions? This is something we do, I don't want to say on a regular basis, but every so okay. often as we replace. Every time that we update, we do try to offer these items to the public, to the community. One of the main differences this year and what we are proposing to the board is in an effort to um, help support parents, but also we always try to make a presence at the Fulton County Fair, be able to have two places to sell these devices. One would be right here in this room for parents who may not be participating in the fair or able to go to the fair. The other uh, sales opportunity would be right there at the fairgrounds for parents who maybe have taken off or are going to be out there to visit. Um, we try to have a booth there and that would be something maybe to draw them in and, and 
have those available to parents and community members there. Questions or concerns? Anything from the community? And I'll entertain a motion that we uh, approve the uh, high book sales plan. Move. Move. Thank you, Mark. Second. And Jenny. All those in favor? Motion carries 7 0. Next, uh, approval of ordering the of the athletic scoreboard. So I've asked Kevin to come in and share or answer questions as well, but this would be the replacement in regards to the scoreboard that was damaged last fall during the windstorm. Um, the reason that I wanted to bring this back to the board was just for transparency. Typically after we have an incident happen, that flows very quickly and we get everything ordered and replaced. There was a delay in this portion of it. So just wanted the transparency when the board um, sees that large purchase order go through. Please know insurance will reimburse. It's a cash cash flow. We would pay that out. Re insurance would then come in and reimburse us for that. But I believe that uh, Kevin has provided the quotes for that and a picture of what that scoreboard would look like. Okay. I'm excited. So this is the replacement for the replacement, right? Correct. Correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody was out there screwing light bulbs in that thing till like three yeah. in the morning, weren't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Somebody our, was. Yes. A bag of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> There's truth. All right. All yeah. those, uh, okay, any questions from the? Yeah, I, I forget, did this include, uh, we're gonna do different foundation? Yes, it would be. include that? Mm -hmm. like, the structure that holds the <laughs> scoreboard. There's a, they use a, Nevco uses a third party installator, or installer that will, um, in that quote, I think, And was that also covered by the insurance claim? The structure, the new structure. I mean, one of the poles was bent over. I would have to go back and look, but yeah, the pole structures. All three I beams were bent. See, so they were trashed after the storm, weren't they? Yeah. That was scary. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? I just read. Anything else from the board? Yeah, I've got it too. I just want to that. Okay. <coughs> the, uh, the sponsorships that are sold on there, does that go to, is that part of the Boosters Club? Is that, um, that's still the next stage. Okay. Okay. So those ads were sold um, when, when the board was originally put up. Um, it was all on NEVCO and they used the funds from the sponsors to do that. And then after they got all of their thing, their costs paid for, then the school, the athletic department start uh, receiving revenue from that. We just, we got our first revenue check, I think in July. Um, and then we are contracted, every one of those on there that you see are contracted through at least 24. Oh. Some of them are 25 minutes, that's why it, I kind of have to go back on this. Um, at the work session, I put um, there was a the spreadsheet. The, I don't think I sent that to you today. Um, there was a there was a spreadsheet that showed all the sponsors and and when they were uh, to come to you and you know how much they paid for there. For example, you would have seen on that sheet um, Smith Sword and Smith would have paid more than uh, Team Pride. Right? Couple reasons: it's bigger ad, it's on top. Whereas team, you see, Team Pride is yep. two. So the amount that they, those folks paid for that spot, and um, we would we would be uh, under contract at least through 24, whatever their contract says on there, um, for those advertisers. And the plan going forward with that would be uh, if we wanted based upon the NEVCO sales rep, he would suggest that, that we make those, uh, we reach out to those people ourselves, so NEVCO doesn't take part of that. Yep. Um, gotcha. And then we would we would receive all of that and keep the sign up there. Um, he's, been, he's been extremely helpful 
um, in the process and answer any questions. We like to stay in touch with him. He's going to retire here in about eight months, so he'll he'll keep walking me through some of the steps and the processes uh, to maintain those those ads on the board. Any other questions? Estimated Mark? completion. Uh, we <coughs> the day first. A long long time ago, he said it would have been about fourteen weeks, but when we got into this discussion, he said it's football. We'll be fine. So I'll, <laughs> I'll call him tomorrow. Okay. If, if we get approval and and we'll get we'll get an estimated time of completion then. And there won't be anybody out the night before screwing my bulbs into it. I can't say yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> so we should talk about potatoes. Stock up on potatoes. Stock up on potatoes. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions from the board? Anybody else with questions or concerns? If not, we'll. Uh, Entertain a motion to approve ordering the athletic floor board. So moved. Thank you, Jenny. Second. Okay. <laughs> You've done, I think you're louder, I guess. <laughs> and all those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Take that phone call. I guess the only thing, yeah, I would ask is that let's expedite this to make sure that it's going to be up and we have those assurances that, you know, Kevin has that actual verbal and has spoke to him, and he said it will take four weeks, it will take six weeks, you know. It'll be in writing? Good um, answer. That okay. would be great. The item, or agenda item number five, approval of the stamp to be used by the RS, RCSC athletic department. So I'm going to ask Kevin to, to share out, but what we're trying to do is to provide to the community and to stakeholders um, a means to identify when they uh, are supporting um, clubs, groups, or, um, when they're supporting the camps that go on, the tournaments that go on, those types of things, that they understand what is sanctioned, supervised, and sponsored by Rochester Community Schools and what lies outside of our jurisdiction. Understanding that those clubs are a vital part of what uh, helps to feed our programs, we want to make sure that we continue to support those help those uh, communications go out, embrace those, but just really trying to help the public discern where their funds are going and who has governance over those. So, Kevin, if you want to share out. Okay, yeah, the, um, I think this evolved. What we wanted to do is we wanted to stay away from any discussion concerning changing the logo, because that that's not what we were wanting to do. Um, we, we don't want to, we will stay with zebras and keep our old English art. So we, we're going to use the word more of like a stamp that will go on all the flyers that go to the elementary buildings uh, for registration for camps, clinics, um, and things like that that the, that the coaches have. Um, so like the parents will know this is sponsored by the school. Instead, we had some confusion with a fundraiser last year um, in February where uh, front office got some phone calls that they were confused as they thought their fund, the funds were going to the school team and they weren't they were going to the club and they weren't sure that that's what they wanted their money to go to and so there was some confusion and so with all of the different clubs that we have in the clubs it's it's play on words I guess you'd say I mean it's Words matter, but like, like the football club, the money's collected for the football club will go to the high school, the middle school programs. They'll they'll use those monies to go to the youth football leagues and different things like that. Whereas if it's money raised by the high school football team, all that money stays with the high school football team in whatever's purchased, and those things will have a stamp on it. The football club, anything that goes out communication wise to the public will not have that stamp on it. So, it, or the Royals. The, Roy, the Rochester Royals do a fundraiser, they're not gonna have a uh, RCSC stamp on it. Um, so people will know that it's not, whatever they're doing, fundraising is not going to the high school swim team. Does that make sense? Just trying to clarify that a little bit because it got kind of messy last February. Um, and trying to avoid that. 
if all possible. Yes, Mark? Yeah. Is youth football under that up, under our umbrella? No. Okay. Like so youth baseball isn't either? Yeah, youth okay. baseball. Okay, I, thought, I thought I heard you say youth football and that kind of thing. Well, it, right. So it, so if money is being raised or things are being done with a golf outing by the football club, they can use that money, will go to, can be used for the youth football team. Whereas if they're raising money just for the high school football team, that's the school sponsored. Okay, so the, the football club is a separate thing. It's a separate thing. And yeah, I get that. Okay. So they would not have the stamp thing. Correct. Right, right, right. right. I, I was hearing, you probably said it right, I just heard it wrong. I thought you were saying that the, the youth football <coughs> league would, would be able to get the, eligible to get the stamp. No. Good. No. Okay. Not sanctioned or supported gotcha. or um, supervised, supervised by, by the school itself. Now, there, there will be people that work within those clubs that are related to the school. For example, the wrestling club is not related. It's not a school sanctioned thing, but several members of the coaching staff for the club are also members of yeah. the school coaching staff. So that's where it kind of gets kind of, kind of yucky, but if we can separate those two things, um, at least in the eyes of the people who made calls to the office saying, we thought the money was going for this, but it's really for this, we would like to eliminate those. And then you and Oscar, I suppose, would be the ones and maybe the front office would, would take care of uh, dealing that stamp out. Yeah, all the coaches will have um, those are, and so anytime they want to have a fundraiser or a camp or a clinic, for example, girls basketball team is gonna have a golf outing, and on their flyer that describes the outing, it's got the stamp in the bottom corner of it. So, so you know that money raised in that outing is sponsored by and supervised uh, directly related to the school. I guess my real question is, you will be aware of all those? Yeah, when that Jana, stamp goes Jana out. approves yeah. all that That's communication that goes out, before it goes out. Yeah, got it. Great. And was this something we are gonna do at the middle school as well? Yes, that, this is the old one, and Mark had a good suggestion at the work session to change it instead of saying RHS athletics, it should say RCSC, so that'll include middle school as well. Because that's what I was thinking with the Little Zebras dribblers that just started. Is it dribblers? That's that's separate dribblers? from the school? That is separate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> and, and we, for we example, know, we know that there's going to have to be a comprehensive communication plan, and we're going to have to continuously keep this in the forefront of the stakeholders' mm -hmm. mind. So, as Kevin uses WROI um, when he has his morning show um, communication here, I see Val in, in uh, the back of the room, so hopefully he can help us communicate that out as well. But we're going to have to continually keep this in the forefront of the stakeholders' mind. But anything that's sponsored. Uh, supervised, sanctioned by Rochester schools will contain one of these stamps on them and that will help us disseminate the information. That's a good idea. I think it's important too. too when you're talking about um, sanctioned by, that means that anything that has a stamp on it, that those monies are not only the decisions made by the school, but are tracked by the school. So the monies that are raised from anything that has the stamp on it, as I'm understanding that, would go through our ECA, through our secretaries, as that is tracked. And then other organizations that operate outside of it, they have their own governing structures, their own people, and so donors who are looking to donate there would need to do their due diligence into whatever governing structure is, is accounting for those monies, um, because that's outside of our jurisdiction. No, we it's can't answer questions point. about that. We don't control that. <laughs> and, and we don't, I mean, we have several of those accounts that are outside of the school. Um, and as we had coach turnover in the last year, we moved six of those accounts that were outside. Those are now in-house. And, and so we have those, they're part of the ECA. Um, swimming and tennis, um, girls basketball was, was another one. And, it's just neater that way and, and much more, um, you know, you can, you can account for 
for things better. That, like some of those other accounts, you, we don't have any idea right. what, what's in them, and so we don't have any say over them uh, because they're not part of the school. But hopefully, this will help with the, the public to be able to discern what's what's going to the school program and what's going to the club or something else. Any questions? Thank you, Jenny, for clarifying that. I just know the money part of it is an important part mm -hmm. and yeah. that it is. ECAs can be, um, it's just important for everyone involved to have those looked over because a lot of those are usually cash transactions too. Well, so anybody who's not school personnel, ECA stands for extracurricular activities. I had to learn that at some point. We all need to know that. So. Well, the other thing I'll toss out, and that's food for thought later on, is <clears throat> what about other fundraisers that school, I'm thinking of band and choir fundraisers that I dealt with at the middle school, what have you. Those might be things that once the community starts looking for that stamp of approval, that's mm -hmm. connected to the schools, it may bleed over into other areas. That's for another that's time, but it's just something. That's a good point. That is a good point. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the group here? Any questions or concerns from the community? All right. I'll entertain a motion that we approve the stamps uh, with the uh, changes to from RHS to RCSC uh, on the stamps, and we will <coughs> look further into uh, Mark's suggestion as we move forward. So moved. Thank right. you, Ethan. Mark. All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Hey, real quick, since we're on athletics right now, uh, we're talking about the football field and baseball field. Uh, if we ever get a chance to upgrade the scoreboards inside the gym, we should look at. I know we, our ceiling won't allow it, but uh, North Judson and San Pierre, they have. A Awesome scoreboard <laughs> in their gym. Just wanted to throw it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Williams is name on top of it. <laughs> well, Stephen Williams to gets the right numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it happen. I don't know if we can do that either. You guys have to do that. Just have to raise the ceiling in the gym about 25 feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, then we'll just redo the that. whole gym, and then when he's no, off the board, we call it the Stephen Williams Gymnasium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think volleyball should weigh in on that. <laughs> Why don't you give me a new floor first? <laughs> Where do you need a new Jason's floor? Jason's like, I just want lights. Where? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the gym? Okay, just checking. Okay. Anything else before we move on? Requests? And <laughs> but make sure you put in the minutes to keep the stick figures. Okay. Yes. It's it's favorite. <laughs> stick figures in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Moving on. Um, um, item number six: approval of overnight football camp to Manchester College, June 12th through June 15th, 2023. That's something they've done yearly, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And this this year is included in eighth grade. That's important to know. Okay. Eight through twelve, baby. Wow. <laughs> Same building. So. I'm just trying to just, I'm looking at this from a grandmother's perspective. There goes another, you know, four days of vacation that, you know, I'm just looking at That's all right. I, I'm oh, gosh. You have to shorten your cruise date up. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> all right. He's on vacation. I've known Mark since, um, I think I was four when we moved in next door, just so you know. Okay. Yeah, we went to neighborhood. Right? <laughs> all right. Any other questions or concerns about approving the football field uh, overnight football camp? Anybody in the community with concerns, questions? I'll entertain a motion, please. So moved. Casey. Second. Ethan. All right. All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Off they go. And approval of an exception to the Wednesday rule for fifth grade orientation at RMS. Cassie, anything you want to share? Yeah, it's just very helpful when we get those dates that we don't have anything going on at RMS or the elementaries. I think the high school has some away events, but no home events. 
Um, I believe we did this last year as well, or maybe it was the beginning of the year with an open house. But we, the last time we used the Wednesday, we had 90, over 90% 90 attendance, which was amazing. So I think that did have something to do with it, just lack of other events and lack of other places to be. Let them come to us and we will feed them. And we want to see everybody. <laughs> All right. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the gallery? I'll accept a motion. I move so, we approve the exception to the Wednesday rule for fifth grade orientation in our events. Second. Jenny and Mark. Thank you. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Mm -hmm. Motion carries 70 zero. Okay. Student and stakeholder focus, donations. As always, we have a nice list here. I got it. Okay. Um, for Columbia Elementary, $100 to assist with school lunches for those in need from the American Legion Post 36. You're part of that, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh. On behalf of... I don't believe in yours. I don't know if Oh, either way. So, thank you. Columbia Elementary, $200 for student needs from an anonymous donor. Thank you, whoever you are. Real Elementary, $100 to assist with the school lunches for those in need, American Legion Post 36 of Rochester. RMS, $303 to assist with tickets for fifth graders seeing a movie at the Times Theater at $3 per student. And that's from the Steve Moore Insurance Agency. Uh, many thanks to them. RHS, $50 for the RHS track <coughs> family. Um, RHS, $250 for the RHS track from Susan Cox. RHS, $200 for the RHS track from Rosemary Bailey. RHS, $500 for the RHS track from an anonymous donor. RHS, what did I do? Oh, Emily Skip Bailey. $100. I, uh, I'm sorry, $100 for the RHS track from Emily Bailey. $50 for the RHS track from Sue Cash, and RCASC $150.20 corporation donation from the Kroger card participants. On behalf of the Miller family, you're welcome. Okay, <laughs> Kroger. Okay. Um, we are always grateful for all of our donations. We also received a $1,000 um, donation for the prom committee from the Optimus Group, and that's outstanding, so thank you very much. Um, again, it's overwhelming how uh, very kind everyone is. It's happening. I'm sorry? It's happening, we're having it. You're having a problem, all right. In Paris, right? In Paris. Oh, wait, wait. That was my problem. That was good, I guess. Paris, that's funny, yeah. That was my problem. I think everybody, everybody in, the, in the whole country did um, steroid ahead of me when I graduated. It was mm -hmm. just a thing. I'll be in clapping. <laughs> so, um, one thing I wanted to say before we move on, this is just a, but if, if you did not have an opportunity to see the uh, Wizard of Oz at the high school this past weekend, um, it was phenomenal. Um, it was enjoyable. It was, it was evidence of hard work on so many different people's parts. The kids were obviously enjoying it. The little kids had a great time up there on stage. Um, I took uh, my granddaughters, uh, the boys were like, nah, we're not going. Okay, I, I offered, but they chose not to go. But um, the, they enjoyed it so much. And the costuming, the everything, the costuming, the music, even the little oops things that happen, like somebody went to a door and went, and they put their hand down and you heard knock 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 from you know from the but it was it was cute it was just cute it what didn't it didn't take anything away from it it just was the reality of doing live theater so um just kudos to um miss uh i'm gonna say mr avery and i know that's Allen. miss miss allen and mr gerwin thank you mr gerwin see i know that first name. all right and um they did a phenomenal job. The kids, the stage Brenda, hands, everybody. What? Taylor, right? Brenda McLean. Brenda McLean. Brenda McLean, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 
anyway, it was just super. It was just superbly well done, and uh, they should be very proud of what happened. There. Next, we move on to uh, the personnel report. So they approve the donation. I'm sorry. I will Is there something them. specific going on at track? I'm just curious if they were like raising money for a specific heard, and I didn't get a letter for a fundraiser. What's, what's going on with the track? Yeah, what's going on? Nothing. He just has a lot of supporters, and they've got boys and girls. They have close to 90 kids, probably. A lot of things. We are going to have to replace the standards for the pole vault uh, uh, event, the mat. Two weeks ago on Friday, blew up on top of them and smashed them. So we're that like department's looking at about two thousand dollars for that. But that's a different thing. The track itself is is great, and the hurdles are fairly new. There's always upgrades that need to happen. What's the number up? You said they have ninety. What what is that up from? Uh, he said he had that number last year, close to that last year. Mm -hmm. uh, when they go on the road, it's it's a production just under what football is to get them all to the spot where they're going. It's and he's I don't know, Mr. Coach Elt's got four volunteer coaches that are there every day, along with the other paid coaches he has. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I misunderstood as you. So he's he, got. He's back-to-back -back conference champ, which is kind of an unheard of thing in our conference. So yeah, I, I have misunderstood, yeah. He's got a lot I thought of you support. meant like the numbers that increased to 90, and I thought, well, what was it last year then? Yeah, what are we talking about? It's about 20% of the high school then. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Oh, <laughs> it's, the high school's in it's, program. It's, it's ridiculous. It's great. It's great. <laughs> and he's got a... Um, well, it's a well-oiled machine, and they start in the middle of February, and they go, um, and it's pretty good. So he has, uh, he does a really nice job of uh, talking about the 500 Club and uh, the the monies that they have uh, given for different equipment he has. And just, just real quick, not take up a lot of time. He's got um, monitors, for lack of a better. Uh, term that you can set out on the track that will get their splits from, you know, for 30 yard intervals and the kids wear chips on them and you can talk about acceleration and where the kids are slowing down in their race or um, he can time eight kids at once on this thing, he puts it on a spreadsheet, it becomes very competitive with all of the kids um, and there is not a, he said there is not a school under a thousand uh, kids enrollment in the state that he knows of that has this this system where they can break down and look at this data on on the kids and um, and to improve you know their quickness and their part of the races that seem to slow up but they have hardcore data in front of them it's um, if you get a chance ask Charlie or Charlie Schwenk about it she was there for the for the meeting at the boosters it's coach health is I hope he stays for a long time. Because he's, he's fantastic. Thank you for that additional in, uh, information, Kevin. I yeah. appreciate that. Okay, I will accept a motion that we approve the donations as presented. So moved. Second. Mark and Stephen. All right, all those in favor? Motion carries 7 0. Faculty and staff. Personnel report from Columbia Elementary. Uh, Joanna Johnson, Columbia Summer Reading Program Director, stipend of $1,500. Madison Henning, long term sub for Title I Kindergarten, daily rate of $140. Riddle Elementary, Don Howard, long, oh, Don Howard, long term sub for second grade special education. And I'm sorry, but I've seen the hyphenated names too. Uh, <laughs> Long-term sub for second grade special education position at a daily rate of $140. Corinne Hines, long-term sub for fourth grade maternity leave, May 18th through the 26th, and August 1st through September 23rd at a daily rate of $140. IA transfers, 
Mary Connor moving from RMS to RHS and her pay will remain the same. Natalie Prapatakis moving from RHS to RMS, pay will remain the same. Rochester High School for 23-24 school year. Jeremiah Lomer, P POTW Engineering and Civil Construction, annual pay $65,300. Maintenance Department, Keaton Mills, Building Tech, hourly rate $12. <clears throat> Athletic Recommendations, Linnea Strasser, Head Varsity Volleyball Coach, stipend of $6,460. $6, Scott Hadeshell, assistant softball coach, stipend $1,973. Lindy Lunau, RMS cheer coach, stipend of $828. Athletic resignations, Stacy Wilson, RMS cheer coach, effective for $1723. Resignations, David Wallace, RHS teacher, effective $327.23. Noah Miller, RMS. Instructional Assistant, effective 3-1-23. Bryce Cummins, RHS Maintenance Staff, effective uh, March 1st, 20, or March 17th, 2023. Christian Gross, Grostathon, RMS Maintenance Staff, effective March 21st, 23. Abby Hadeshell, Title IX Coordinator, effective May 26th, 2023. Sheikha Kajar Kumar, Administrative Assistant Position, Effective 5-1-23. Sydney Stroder, Riddle, Third Grade Teacher, Effective the end of the 22-23 school year. Terminations, Elena Swanson, Effective April 14, 2023. Any questions or concerns? Okay, if not, we will uh, approve a motion or uh, we'll entertain a motion to accept the personnel report as read. So moved. Thank you, Jenny Second. and Casey. All those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Superintendent's business. Um, if, I'll go through all of the principles, but um, if I may, Skeeter, would you mind just sharing some updates in regards to uh, bus start, stop arm violations, other trends that you may be seeing just to bring the board up to speed? Arm violations we are averaging one a week we are up to 38 as of today um, some weeks we're averaging two to three but it's one a week since the beginning of school so drivers are not paying attention so we got various areas that is happening in we've been patrolling those areas been stopped in those areas but it continues so that's it's one a week um, vapes the ongoing thing with the high school, middle school, very low, but still, they're, they're rising. High school, just this year, 1st of January, officer involved vapes is only is 25. I don't know what overall Oscar has done. We don't get called into all of them. And the same with middle school. We don't get called in unless they're a vape and suspicious. So suspicious vapes were 25. When he says suspicious vapes, at least at the high school, those are the ones we test for THC. We get okay. several others that are just over the counter, smell like Jolly Ranch. I don't know what we call those. Yeah. That's what we call them. <laughs> Watermelon. Yeah. It's a cotton candy. Can you, can you share with the board the process that you go through when we do have bus stop arm violations, the steps that you guys go through and where that lands? Once, once the violation occurs, the bus driver is recorded. <clears throat> Kim takes it in, she downloads it off of the bus. Um, we get several shots of the vehicle front, front and rears uh, of the license plates. That is then handed over to me. I then again take that out to the detective. At the sheriff's department, he gives that to the on-road deputy to go out and write the ticket. There's not been one that they have not written. They've written every one. Um, Luke's case, we had two weeks ago. Same lady twice, going the wrong way, passed our buses. She was out of Marshall County. They went and got her. That's the process. They are written a ticket. They are cited into court. So 
from the Zuni court. Steve, do you, do you know why that those things don't make it to the paper? No, sir, I do not. They have access. <laughs> Every so often you see one, but you're not seeing as many as, as, many as we're handing out, no. I agree. It would be nice to see those in the paper personally. I think it would draw Maybe attention. A peer pressure from people that uh, might uh, encourage others to be careful when they're around the bus with the river. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's why, kind of why I brought up the, the uh, golf cart thing. How in the world are they going to identify a golf cart violation? Yeah. Or not. So it's just going to be a little scary. <laughs> That's just a curiosity I have. I think it really scary that what else are they not recognizing when you have a big yellow bus in front of you? It's not like it's a brand new thing. We don't know. I, I mean, they haven't gotten smaller. No. They've gotten actually so wider really as far as the lights. Like what, what the malfunction is here. Well, stop signs have been the same for... I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they, but there were a way for the yeah. community to hear the panic and the bus driver's voice, and we all hear it in the morning, and you just hold your breath. It, it is a tense time across the district when those get radios Across all districts. It, sure. it is, it is. I know Kevin's daily running the video back and forth to Kim to get the copy down daily for taking something. Thank you for taking other proactive steps. I mean, this is an important step to catch the people who, as much as possible, who are doing it, citing them. But doing things like changing so that the students only get in on the right hand of the bus yeah. and those kinds of things our proactive steps that we have control over that we can help with. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Our next step would be to find a way to only pick up in daylight, but that requires things bigger than us here to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Skeeter? Thank you. Mr. Snyder? All right. A couple of uh, things that we just had uh, finished up this last couple of weeks, uh, successful Kindergarten Roundup, had a really good turnout there. Uh, Katie was there the entire time. And she talked all day long to parents and developed relationships and just uh, communicated to them a lot of information, so we were very grateful for that. Um, we had our best um, class uh, go to Pizza Hut the other day for a field trip. That was a very good field trip. They went with uh, Riddle's best class as well and um, just a great opportunity for those kids to, to get out and have some experiences. And I was hearing some of the stories. I was unable to go. I had something going on I had to deal with at the time, so I couldn't make it. But they were talking about the pizzas that they brought back with them and took them home, and it was, just, it was exciting for them. So that was a really good, really good trip. Um, we had the Wizard of Oz at the high school today, and uh, I want to thank the high school um, for hosting us. Uh, they did a fantastic job. Um, as Katie had mentioned, it was a great uh, uh, show. Our kids absolutely loved it, um, and they were fantastic. They were very well behaved. Our staff did a fantastic job. Our teachers did. And um, it was just a really good, really good experience for our kids. Um, and kindergarten concert um, tomorrow night at the high school. Uh, Jasmine Rensler is kind of the one leading that right now, and uh, she's doing a great job. She teaches our kindergarten music program, and uh, that'll start at 6.30, and we're looking forward to that. Uh, first grade will be going to the Times Theater on Friday, and uh, we'll be going outside to Manitou Mountain. Uh, they've got several activities planned uh, for Earth Day on Friday. Uh, we have a Head Start tour taking place at Columbia next week. And um, we have, have or are reaching out to all the preschools in the, uh, in the community um, to offer any kind of uh, tour that they may want and we're accommodating those as needed. We'll be taking uh, 10 kids to the flagpole on um, the following week. These were kids that were recognized at Zebra Zone for receiving a star card. And then in two weeks, we will be doing bowling in our PE, and um, uh, Miss Jana is the PE teacher there, and she'll be actually taking all of the kids to the bowling alley. Uh, we appreciate the bowling alley support because they always support us and are very uh, helpful during that week in kindergarten, and first grade will be doing that. 
And the only other thing is we did a uh, Alice drill uh, this week, last week. Um, and we, uh, as we do any kind of drill, um, I will say it was a success because we found some areas that we can improve on. Um, had some questions from staff members about certain situations. When that kind of stuff comes up, um, it's good because it's a teaching moment for them. Um, but the kids handled it very well, the staff handled it very well. And we continue to um, teach those kids at the youngest age um, as soon as they come into our corporation uh, about the Alice fundamentals and uh, the safety of our students. So that's all I have. Any questions for Mr. Snyder? Mr. Bernanke? Um, Riddle, we launched our One School, One Book, so that's going very well. We had a, a a great launch on our first day and all the kids got their books and then we had uh, the Culver Military Academy came and uh, did a fencing presentation for our, for our kids which was really cool like maybe I enjoyed it too much uh, but I, that was really neat so I appreciated that um, and so going along with that we've got our big family night this Thursday night so that's uh, the other thing we had a successful spaghetti dinner I think that was last week and uh, then this Friday, we'll be wrapping up and saying goodbye to our friend Despero. Um, so that'll wrap that up. But I just thank you to all the community and teachers and everything for, for putting that together. It's definitely by far our best year yet. And uh, they still even have uh, partnering with the Times Theater They've, uh, for a red carpet event coming up in May to screen the tale of Despero and have the kids dress up fancy and get their pictures taken and interviewed and things like that. <laughs> going to be a, a big deal so if you're around and you want to come check that out please do I'll let you know when that is I think I want to say May 11th is when we're doing that um, as the middle school is going to talk about I'm sure we've got iLearn coming up take a practice test this week and the real deal next week running club is back at full swing and they'll have a kids fit uh, they do that mini marathon in Indy in May and pretty soon our incoming second grade kids will be visiting Riddle as well, so we'll give them the, the big tour. And before we meet again, our fourth grade is going to be heading on their end of the year field trip to Science Central in Fort Wayne. So a lot of things are, are happening now. Warp speed, as I like to say. <laughs> Any, Any questions? questions? Thank you. Yes. I'd like to know what the name of the book is that all of the kids are going to be reading. The Tale of Despero. The Tale of Despero. Yes. Thank you. Let's see, we've got a lot going on, so I wrote down some notes. So um, since we last met, all grades five, six, and seven have gone on college field trips. They all went very, very well. Um, this was the first, oh, fifth grade went to Grace College, sixth grade went to Ivy Tech Kokomo, and seventh grade went to Manchester. This was the first time we had went to Ivy Tech Kokomo, and the teachers and students came back beyond excited about what they saw. So if you have not visited that campus, I encourage you to do so, I'm going to. I had several staff members say, like for their personal kids, they're interested in all the things they had to offer. So it was Which a great school? one that we'll definitely be going back to. Which school? Ivy Tech Pokemon. I guess it was built maybe five years ago. Okay. We have a staff member that used to work for Ivy Tech and she kind of took it on and spearheaded it and got us an amazing tour and tour guides and it was just great. So they all have done that. We also took the whole school to Logan Sports to see the Mario movie on the premiere date of the Mario movie, which was a big deal for many kids. Uh, they all loved it. They did us proud. We walked all, all the way up and down the theaters. There was maybe half a dozen pieces of popcorn. They all got popcorn and a drink. And they did a very nice job of cleaning up after themselves, being respectful, and it was a good day. When we got back to school, we did this as a leveling up for iLearn. So we did all Mario activities for the rest of the day, talking about how to do your best on the test. There was a funny little skit a few of my teachers did that we put out, hopefully you guys saw that. It was fantastic. So we are ready for that iLearn. We're doing the same thing. We're doing um, practice tests this week and then the real deal next week. For RMS track, we did have some new school records set. Let me find them. We had some overall middle school records set. Congrats to Kyra Doran, eighth grader, for new records in the 200 meter dash and long jump. Kyla Conley for setting a new record in the 100 meter hurdles. And new 400 meter relay record holders, 
Kyra Doran, Ryland Strasser, Aubrey Wilson, and McKenna McKee. That was an exciting track. Uh, Wizard of Oz was amazing. Our pool locker room construction is going strong and very loud. A little funny, <laughs> little funny tidbit there. You know, my knowledge of all this construction is minimal. My, one of my secretaries runs into my office. Something's wrong. Something's wrong in the gym. You got to come. Something's not working. So here I go. You know, all my knowledge. I walk in. I'm like, oh my gosh, something is not working. Like I'm walking around trying to figure out what it is. As I get closer, I realize. Uh, we have construction going on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is on the other side of the wall, some sort of jackhammer maybe, or I don't know, it was very, very loud. So then, you know, Mr. Roberts comes out and he's like, yeah, it's, it's the construction. <laughs> I had already called Doug and maintenance and was ready to like figure out what was going on, but it's just construction. So everything is going fine. We did take the opportunity um, I don't remember when it was when we had an actual severe weather incident happen where we had to um, shelter in place. Deputy Scott, myself, Mr. Shane Halls all felt like we could do that better. So we kind of redid the areas where the kids would go to make it safer. And then we did another drill on that for the next month. Coming up, I learned, of course, fifth grade is going to go to a South Bend's Cubs game, May 3rd. Uh, we will now have fifth grade orientation, May 10th. Thank you. Our seventh and eighth grade end of the year dance will be May 13th. Seventh grade is going to the South Bend Zoo, May 16th. Our NJHS goes to DC, May 16th through the 21st. Fifth grade is going to the Times Theater. They don't know what they're gonna see yet, but we're gonna go to the Times Theater. And fifth and sixth grade end of the year beach party is May 19th. So lots, lots to come. <laughs> Guess we got a bottle of water and we need a drink by the time we get halfway yeah. through this. <laughs> he told me to be brief. Uh, but since the last board meeting, we had the FFA auction and it went off without a hitch. If it had been Sunday, we probably had to double our money because the weather was beautiful. So, no, we had a great turnout. The uh, organization made a pretty good amount there. So, that was another successful year. So, we appreciate the community's support with that. Uh, we also hosted the mayoral debate on March 27th. Um, that was nice, uh, our auditorium to get used by the community. Um, we had our big senior meeting. That's a big deal for the seniors. They come in, they get told, basically there's kind of one rule between that senior meeting and the end of the year. Don't do anything dumb. <laughs> um, we made it through ASVAB. We had NHS induction. Uh, we did some vision screenings for our eighth graders. We gave ACT. Uh, we made it through the makeup day on April 7th. And they, our FCYLA uh, was out of the building doing what FCYLA does with Mrs. Snyder, which is really good for those kids. And then this past weekend, we hosted over a thousand people in the auditorium over two nights with the Wizard of Oz. Um, I know earlier it was mentioned about Miss Allen and Mr. Gerwin. Somebody that gets left out a little bit is Mrs. Weaver. It's a whole corporation music program, and. I'm going to really miss Mrs. Weaver after schools because we have about almost, I think there's 18 kids that come from Riddle and Columbia that are staff owned. And uh, whatever Mrs. Weaver does, she had them, they would come in, they all sat against the wall. Quiet, didn't talk, Mrs. Weaver would show up when she could, and they would all march single file down. Now they're going to come through the hall and we're going to know when school's really over. Going. So uh, we really appreciated that whole community or whole school community effort for that. Uh, we were able to do it for the elementaries today, um, so that was kind of neat. And kudos to the transportation department because we got out a little bit late and they got turned around from Riddle and back to us and picked up the kids pretty quick, so that was good work, Luke. It's all transportation. <laughs> yeah. We were nervous though, weren't we? <laughs> <laughs> <A little> nervous. <laughs> okay, we do have uh, eighth grade island coming up May 1st through the 5th. Um, we will also have the biology ECA somewhere in that same time frame. Uh, Mr. Kissler's department's helping us with that. Uh, we have the art banner contest, which will also be hosted in the uh, auditorium. That'll be on April 19th. Then this Friday is the live prom crash reenactment. I kind of put that in my weekly happenings today. So on Friday, if you hear all the sirens and bells and whistles coming, they are coming to the <coughs> school. It is a planned thing for our juniors and seniors as we get ready for prom. 
that next weekend. The FFA banquet's the 22nd. Uh, we have a blood drive on the 28th if you want to come give blood. We have the prom on the 29th. We have the Kiwanis Chicken Noodle Dinner on May 1st. We'll do our recruitment fair where I think we're up to about 37 or 38 um, local businesses that will come in to the high school gym and we'll run all the juniors and seniors through there on May 3rd. Um, we got 8th grade reality fair on May 10th. We have a band concert on May 11th. We don't have to go to the makeup day on May 12th. Yeah. That's a nice Friday off for the Money staff. The, uh, he just have, jinxed it. It's all yeah. <laughs> we have a choir concert May 14th. And then in JHS, the eighth graders are going to Washington, D.C. the 16th to the 21st. Uh, we have the New Fields Art Museum field trip on the 19th. Senior Honors Night, Big Money Night, hopefully for a lot of our seniors on May 19th as well. The eighth grade underclassmen awards during, are during homeroom on the 22nd. And I think we'll have a board meeting before the rest of this happens, but just so you're aware, baccalaureate and graduation is June 2nd. Senior breakfast is May 26th. So that you guys are all invited to those experiences. And for the public, summer school and summer intercession will be the week of May 30th through June 2nd for intercession and through June 26th for summer school for those planning purposes for our parents. Questions? Yep. Yes, sir. You've mentioned a couple times and everybody else, I believe, has touched on the auditorium. Do you keep track of how often this auditorium is being used? Mrs. Mellon could give me that information if I was to ask for it. I don't know it off the top of my head, I'll be honest, but it's used a lot. She does turn that in to me, and one of the things that Todd and I are looking at is whether or not it's time to try to have, as a part-time position, an auditorium manager that works with the community in regards to that. So we definitely have that data and are okay. looking at uh, more in depth because uh, and it's exactly what it was built for was community usage as well as uh, educational um, practices and programming and it's exactly that's what's happening and so we're thankful because every time that auditory is used there's a paid at least one paid employee there correct at least right. and there's a use fee that's attached yeah. to it if it's somebody who's outside right. of the community and the cool thing is most of the time our students, we have a, our seventh period class in there. We used to call it interactive media. I think we had to change the name for state funding purposes, but it's basically interactive media. They run the soundboard and the lights and all that like they did for the musical. The, the kindergarten concert, they'll be there running that soundboard. So Mr. Snyder doesn't squawk anybody's ears with the microphones or anything like that. But mm -hmm. Much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty, the kids are phenomenal at that stuff. And it's, and they don't have to climb up into the recess at the top anymore. It was a little, little dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But any questions for Mr. Haas? But I just want to wrap up by saying uh, thank you to this team from everybody that's here in this room is such an integral part of the team that makes this work every single day. And one of the things that one of the original board shared with me is we want to see unity across the district and. I don't think that we could have seen that better than on stage with the Wizard of Oz, where at one point in time, we, have, we believe every grade level was represented. And that's a testament to the teamwork that goes on behind, um, behind the scenes, but also supported by this team here in the front of the room. So thank you for that. I, I'd like to throw out, I, I really think it was a great recruiting idea for the arts program to have a Wizard of Oz for the elementary schools, I, I think that's a, something for them to really look at doing in the future. Yeah. I think it was great, it was a wonderful performance. I, I don't think, I would don't know how many of our kids would not have many other opportunities to see live theater either without yeah. that opportunity, so mm -hmm. it's, it's just a win-win all the way around. Much different than when you did it years ago, right, Mrs. Shelley? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> but she was there supporting too. Yeah, and Maria was there. Yeah. It was fun. That's all I have. That's all you have. Anything else for the good of the group? I would entertain a motion that we adjourn. So moved. 
Second. All in favor? Have a great evening. What's left of it? Get some rest. <laughs>